Once every year, spring reawakens to retrieve nature's warmth from the grim grip of winter. New life emerges from the remains of those lost to the cold. Ice returns to water as nature reinvites its choir to unite once more in celebration of spring's embrace. Each leaf dances to the beat of the bear's tracks, just as the muted swan bathes in the sun's heavenly glow. Nature is rejoined through universal communion that invites the presence of every seed and every beast. Well, maybe not every beast. Spring is a reoccurring theme in literature that usually represents rebirth, growth, and quite literally anything you could think of with a positive connotation. However, not all literature adheres to this symbolic template. American novelist John Gardner recycles this cookie cutter theme and twists it in on itself. He uses the season in a way that more or less hurts its characters, specifically regarding the one they call Between the Earth's vast bedrock depths and its gargantuan mountains, a creature emerges, treading amidst the boundless meadows of war. Its body tucked under a carpet of woolly skin, and a horrifically misshapen face, enveloped by the large monstrous features branching from its head. The Ram. Bold. Stoic. Majestic. Truly a creature beyond words. And then there's Grendel cynical, nihilistic giant, similar in nature to characters like Mary Shelley's Frankenstein's monster and Dr. Seuss's The Grinch. They're essentially three peas in the same pod. They're all monsters misunderstood by the world around them, but out of the three, Grendel stands out as the black sheep. He is the living embodiment of pure sin. He's cold, cunning, and an unholy commitment to his maniacal bloodlust. This begs the question. What would drive someone to commit such heinous acts? How can one be filled with such hate and malice? Perhaps retaliation from discipline from a parent? All I've ever wanted is a way from a sympathy and unconditional love. Do do. What? Never mind. But it's not about discipline here, nor is it about human rationality. It's about Grendel's existence as an anomaly to the balance of nature. He's not human, nor is he animal. Just Grendel, and Grendel alone. But let's not get the wrong idea here. It's not a trait he's happy to have. If anything, it's the source of his misery. Grendel yearns for relationships, fully aware that it's the bane of his existence. He lives amidst a population of humans and animals that naturally work both against and alongside each other. In the middle of all of it is him. The monster whom nature does not respond to, and the monster who will justifiably act against it. It's Grendel versus the universe, the world, the Danes, the Thanes, and it just keeps going deeper and deeper. But there is an absolute point in a cycle of madness that everything can trace back to. It's to the story's beginning, the horned beast of the mountains. The ram. And it's not that this creature is the literal apex of Grendel's insanity, but rather the fact that it represents many of the things that define him in a negative light. The ram signifies a lot more beyond being Grendel's organic stress ball. Binomial classification. Ovis Aries. The answers are in the name. The cardinal zodiac sign of fire is an accumulation of everything Grendel is and is not. He's assertive, independent, and passionate only all for the wrong reasons, and it feeds his temper like a growing flame. We already know that this ram angered Grendel by expressing its mechanical nature and uninterested presence, but for him to react with such vulgar behavior reveals an alternate perspective. Grendel is acting against the things he hates the most about himself. He's independent, yet lonely. He's passionate for things he'll never have, and he's assertive through the lack of external social forces to deny his feelings, nor validate them in the first place. Feelings only he can communicate to himself alone. Feelings he takes out onto nature, humans, and this ram in particular, a creature that symbolizes the worst parts of himself. But how does any of this align with the theme of spring? Well, that's the funny part. It doesn't. 
It's complete and utter irony. He defies each expectation established by literature's metaphorical depiction of spring sheerly through his existence alone. When nature eventually thrives, Grendel is inevitably weighed down, and vice versa. And it's not just his misconstrued relationship with the physical world, no. Human concepts and ideals are just another handful of his countless struggles. There isn't much for him to look forward to since he doesn't have an ultimate goal. And there isn't anything for him to look back on because his memories wouldn't bear any emotional significance. Everything beyond his cave is just one big house of mirrors. Anywhere he goes, every path he takes, and every corner he turns, he runs into the same exact problem. Himself. I know, I know I've let you down. I've been a fool to myself. I thought that I could live for no one else. But now, through all the hurt and pain, 